Hi everyone, it's the Catholic CEO, Henry Katarna. Welcome to this Exemplary Catholic Leader Series. Today, my special guest is Patricia Sison. She is the Director for the Centre for Marriage and Family in New Zealand. We're going to get back to her in a second here, but I just wanted to mention to you quickly that the Catholic CEO website, www.thecatholicceo.com, is the place to go for information on all the things that we do, including our Catholic Business Accelerator, the St. Joseph Workshop, and also the Upper Room. So there's some interesting things to look at there, and we'll talk a lot more about that. And don't forget also our special project, The Catholic Economy, www.thecatholiceconomy.com. If you take a look at that, you'll see some exciting things we're doing to link Catholics all over the world in their business pursuits and in pushing their, their own uh, causes and their own interests. So, but back to the matter at hand, the most important thing today, Patricia Cison, Center for Marriage and Family. Hi, Patricia, how are you today? I'm fine, Henry. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. It's really a pleasure to have you, and it's a, it's an honor that we have somebody from New Zealand who's doing such important work. So, you know, our audience would love to hear certainly about your faith journey and all about the Center for Marriage and Family. Maybe would you like to start and tell us about your Catholic faith journey and where you've been and how where you are now and how you came to be there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I have been uh, a Catholic all my life, born and raised a Catholic, went to Catholic schools. Um, I was born in the Philippines and um, yeah, went to Catholic schools. And um, for me, God was always there. I knew that he was around. Um, um, our, my family would always go to mass. We were Sunday Catholics. Um, mm -hmm. And we would pray together from time to time, like especially during special occasions like Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, and we did all the traditional, um, you know, uh, what uh, Catholics do. Um, during Sundays and during special occasions. Um, but, you know, I knew that God was there, uh, that he was, that I could always go to him, especially when I needed him. Yes. Um, and, but he was not uh, very personal to me. I knew that if I had a problem, I could go to him. But um, that all changed when I went, was in my second year in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I was 14 years old. And I remember that the, the school was um, inviting people to go on an immersion. Um, and that was a, like a two week stay in, a, in the province um, where you would teach, um, you would spend time in a poor community teaching them, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like um, it, just teaching the young children there. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so I, I remember that I was very motivated to go. And I even fought with my mom at that time because she didn't want me to go because it was my first time, you know, away from the family on my yes. own. Sure. And I, I, I told my mom, uh, I just want to spread my wings. And then mm -hmm. she allowed me. Mm -hmm. And then so I, we went, uh, we, we rode a boat um, and then we stayed there for two weeks. And it was uh, just a beautiful place. Um, it was a school, beautiful children, poor kids, but they were very happy, you know, they, they, it feel like they were, they had something, you know, that they were, yes, yes. though they were poor, they were happy. And for the first time in my life, I really felt free. I mean, we were surrounded by the sea. We went to mass every day. Um, and that was, that to me was a very special encounter with the Lord. Um, somehow, yeah, that, that encounter with the Lord changed my life. And when I came back from that experience, um, I didn't know, but I was a different person. And um, um, I, I had changed inside, internally. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I was transformed. Um, yeah, so when I, when I went back to um, school, um, somehow I felt depressed. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I felt depressed. Um, and I think it, it had something to do also with sin in my life. And also I couldn't understand what was going on inside of me. There was like a tug of war. Yes. Um, mm -hmm you know, like this conflict inside of me about who I was before and who maybe I was reaching to become or who I had become, even in that span of time, you know, how I, you know, I went through that transformative moment. And um, yeah, I, I struggled. I went through a depression. I really felt that no one could understand me. 
and that um, it was then that I turned to God. Um, mm -hmm. And um, every day I would write in my journal and then I would also compare myself with others and I would think, why can't I be like these people? Um, you know, they're, they seem to be happy. And then I, it just made me more depressed. Um, but, you know, God in his great mercy, I mean, revealed to me that um, he was there um, during this whole process. And, and he made me understand that, you know, that I'm, I was going through uh, maybe uh, something internal and that it was, um, if I re just reached out to him, that he would hold my hand and um, let me get through it. Yeah, and he did. Um, yeah, and actually, um, I was able to write a poem, um, you know, which recounts that experience. And I'd like to share it with you. Um, sure. It was I'd done. Love, I'd love to hear yeah. it. Yes, please. And, and the title of that poem is The Love of God. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote it like um, after that experience. So it made me realize that experience made me realize that, you know, I, although I went through that time of depression, uh, that I could, the minute that I focused on God and the minute that I didn't focus on myself, then I could be truly happy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, the, the title is The Love of God. Um, and it goes this way A grain of sand is all I am in the infinitesimal space of countless lives. If I weep, who will see? Does it matter to anyone but me? I am a little dot inconspicuous to the world, a nameless face in this vast space. Who will seek me when I hide to escape from the harsh realities of life? Many times have I tried to brighten my skies, injured by lies, manifest in heartfelt sighs. Darkness settles, long hands reach out, testing my mettle, ushering a depression bout. Where are you, Lord? Can you hear my plea? I cannot afford. Help me just be. Free me, free me from my fear, this enveloping sadness for which the effect, I shed a tear. Around me are high-pitched voices, tinged with laughter, happy noises. Shouldn't I be like them? Wear I a mask then, grasping blindly at the joy I'm seeking, my strength ebbing, my heart aching. Oh, where can I find you, true happiness? You can be mine too, can you not? See, I look for you. You who, are you there? Perhaps you are here. Take your cue. No longer can I stand by my own hand, day and night, night and day, prayed I and was sustained. Thus I made a resolution to bid goodbye to my confusion. To the prison wall surrounding me, I said, I want to be free. I opened my heart to me and thought happy thoughts and saw the beauty of what could be. I dreamt of the future and knew suffering was my tutor. Soon God painted a new picture. I was a new creature. Yes, a grain of sand am I, who will in time die. But I am something, for someone has loved me. If I weep, he will see me. If I plea, he will answer me. My joys he will share, and my own crosses he will bear. Yes, I am a dot, but I can make a difference. Out there many are in need. In their hearts, I can plant a good seed. The world is not so bad, for with him, I am glad. What I thought would be the death of me has become a door to eternity. So that, um, that was a really uh, powerful experience that I went through um, in my teenage years, and that really transformed yeah. my whole life. Yeah, it's a beautiful um, yeah. rendering of, of that whole experience. I, I, I don't know what else to say, except that it's a beautiful rendering. And... Uh, and so such a powerful moment in your, in your, as a high school student. Yes. Yes. As a high school student. And then from there on, I would also become more active um, in the student council. I, I was more active in the parish. Um, so we attended also, we, I was part of the charismatic renewal movement. Yes. Um, 
I was part of the Young Ambassadors for Christ Ministry. It's the Youth Ministry in the Archdiocese of Manila mm -hmm. and um, uh, Youth Ministry of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in the Archdiocese of Manila. And we would um, go out and um, organize events, Life in the Spirit seminars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, um, and I was also very active in campus ministry um, in, my, in my college years. Mm -hmm. So I think that, and then from there on also, I, you know, God just opened doors for me. I also met people who are not part of the Catholic charismatic renewal, but who were also from, you know, who had different charisms and yes. all of these things, you know, I appreciate because I see in it um, God's working that, you know, the Holy Spirit is, there's so much diversity in the way we express Mm -hmm. um, who we are as Catholics and all of it uh, gives glory to the Lord, you know, um, and it's yes. a yes. way by yes. which he expresses himself in us and through us. Yeah. yeah. It's so it's so amazing about the, well, the different charisms and, and the different people that we've interviewed in this series, for example, all different talents, different people, different ages. Many though have a transformative experience like you're, like you're expressing the, it, it varies. It's always different and it's at different times of life. But it's it's powerful how our Lord, you know, um, zaps you, so to speak, gets you to uh, focus on him. And in our littleness, you, you've mentioned a dot, a grain of sand. You know, in that littleness, we we realize that we are, you know, in one way, he would shed his blood for any one of us if we were the only person on earth, as we know. And so yeah. it makes us feel that we're not just a dot. We're not just a grain of sand. We're something much different than that. So really, it's a powerful story. And, and so here we are then. You've, you're at um, high school. You're in college years. You're involving yourself in all sorts of activities, charismatic movement, and so on. And then at some point, um, things continue. And I know you're going to get to the Center for Marriage and Family at some point. But this is, mm -hmm. uh, you're at the college years now. Now what's happening in your faith? Yeah, in the college years, um, so we were going to have our thesis. So I have a Bachelor of Arts in Mass, commu mass Communication uh, major in Media Production. Yes. And um, so each one of us was required to have a thesis. And my thesis was on um, um, a survey of family ministries in the Archdiocese of Manila. Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, a survey of family ministries in the parishes of the Archdiocese of Manila. So that in in that um, when when I did that thesis, you know, I met um, really good people, really good priests, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Father Edwin Mercado, Father Delfin Felipe, and they were the ones that like opened my eyes as to the importance of the family, uh -huh. um, and yeah, how it is central to our faith and central to God's plan, you know, for yes. God, God's plan for creation. Yes. Um, and um, and that somehow planted a seed in my heart. Um, and um, I, for me, family has always been important. And um, you know, especially when I had my own family, yes. um, I made sure also like that I did my own um, when I got married. That I had, you know, I did the the liturgy because I was in campus ministry as well. So that's what I used to do in in campus ministry, like organize liturgical events religious activities, the masses and all of that. So, um, so when I got married, I did, uh, did, did, as, did it as well. And um, the gospel reading for my, um, in, in my wedding was um, John 15. Um, I am the vine and you are the branches. Um, yes. You can do nothing without me. Right, and, tremendous. And it ends with um, love one another as I have loved you, something like that, yeah. Yes. So that was really, really very important for me. And then in 2002, we went to New Zealand. Um, you know, we were raising a family. The time, I, the time that we came, I was, um, uh, I had two young children. Uh, one was two years old, one was one, and I was pregnant with my third child. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, um, now we, I have six children. <laughs> oh, God bless you and all of them. <laughs> yeah, That's three great. of them um, were, you know, born here. Actually, four of them born here in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I was just living on my life. Um, but um, in 2013, there's this, um, this law that was going to be passed in New Zealand and it was the marriage amendment bill. And the marriage amendment bill would, um, 
redefine marriage to accommodate same-sex couples. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was thinking to myself, because um, I, I come from the Philippines, and if something happened, you know, if I was, if there was a law that was going to come to pass, Filipinos, the Filipino priests, they would speak about it from the pulpit. Sure. You know? Yeah, and, and they would be would really rally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, vocal about things. Yeah. But um, here in New Zealand, it seemed just um, um, people were quiet. There was not really much being said about it. And I just felt a searing inside of me. And um, and I wanted to, I, I felt that there should have, should be a public outcry of some sort. Yes. You know, <laughs> and um, so what I did was I organized uh, like um, uh, not a public, a, a prayer vigil at parliament. Um, yeah, so I spearheaded that. Um, it was, a, it became an interfaith prayer vigil. And that was in 2013, and it was uh, attended by about, about 500 to 800 people. And it was organized maybe in a matter of two weeks. Wow. Yeah, and then we yes. had just a program, we had songs, we had, it was a, it was a really good uh, experience. I mean, it was beautiful in the sense that, you know, we had songs, I mean, it was peaceful, it was prayerful. Mm-hmm. And then we also had the Cardinal come and speak, and also somebody from, um, the uh, Protestant denomination church also to speak um, about marriage and, and, and the family. Yeah, and, and that started it actually. Um, um, so unfortunately the, the law passed in uh, August, 2013. And then after the law passed, we were like, so what now? Is it, or what are you, yeah. you know, yeah. what now? What are we going to do? Is it just be, yeah. let it be or can we do something more and um we decided um well i felt that we could do more and um so that that's how the center for marriage and family came into being but before it was the center for marriage and family it was new zealanders for marriage mm. this movement and it was more like um interfaith but then as time went on i felt you know that um it had it, it had to be more take a more catholic um, bent yes yeah mm-hmm. um and then um and instead of being secular like a secular movement i felt that if i was going to give my life to something i wanted it you know i wanted it to be um to have something to do with spreading the gospel i yes. mean for mm-hmm. me that would be more meaningful you know um and and marriage as you know is a reflection of the love of Christ, yes. the bridegroom with with the church, the bride, and I just felt that, yeah, um, if there's anything that we could do, it was to promote and to strengthen marriage and the family here in New Zealand, and to start with Catholic families, to start with Christian families, because I felt that, in order to really have a transformation in society, um, it should be rooted in Christ. Um, Christ alone can can make that change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And so you, you, um, I can see a, such a natural progression, but all tending towards you're living the, the life of a family. You're in a family, you're part of a family, you're a mother and a, and a wife and you have children and you're now, it sounds like you're getting a little bit more public in your life. Aren't you? You're, you organize this and were you ever a target? Did you ever become visibly you know persecuted did you pay a price for this i guess is what i would be asking you. um well yes in a in a sense um i know that um when we were organizing this um you know going through the process of forming a trust deed and all of these things and and trying to promote the the, the center um there was pushback i felt from mm-hmm. from um you know somewhere that you wouldn't expect <laughs> mm. yeah. yes yes, yes. I could under, yeah and so yeah and this this is a cross to bear because you know you it, it makes one wonder when such pressures can come and i i think i know what you're speaking about that's difficult because mm. your your love of our lord is mm. principally there it's evident mm. and um, if you're getting pushback that's problematic and how do you how do you come out of that is i mean that's a that's a big challenge yeah actually it was um it was like maybe uh, you have like a sense of 
shop. Um, you know, um, you were not not expecting um, the pushback to come from where it came, and um, and also sometimes like um, a feeling of maybe a sense of we're on the same side. <laughs> Right. We're on the same yeah. side, but um, why, why, yeah. why are we, why am I not getting the support that I feel that I should be getting, especially if we're, you know, the same church and all these yeah. things. Yeah. And then I felt maybe there was a, like a sense of, you know, there's like competition mm -hmm. within the church, you know, um, and, you know, and I'm like, you know, we're just like a small organization. We do, we're trying to do something to help the church. We're trying to do something to promote and strengthen marriage and the family. But it seems that, um, you know, it was not welcome. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a sad situation. And, and I'm, I'm not going to give details, but I could tell you that I've experienced it. I've seen this as well in certain, in, in some Canadian cities that I'm familiar with, um, certain causes that attract several different groups, Catholic causes, and um, there's a bit of competition, and then there's selections made. Funds are, are allocated or budgets are given, and one or two organizations may prosper and the other ones don't. So it's very tough, and it's very tough because it's it feels like, a, I don't want to use the word betrayal, that's probably too strong, but it's it's troubling, it's, it's troubling, and so you know, we go to back to our Lord. I imagine you did that. Is that right? You went back and said, Lord, what do we do? What's what's happening here? What's going on? Yeah. So my focus really was the Lord. And I was holding on to our scripture mandate, which was, which was John 15. Yes. You know, yes. remain in me and I yes. remain on yes. you mm -hmm. and you will bear much fruit. So that to me, like my focus was really on the Lord and what he was, what I felt, you know, he was calling me to do. And I felt that I wasn't doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. um, that all the things that we were organizing were for the good of um, families, for the good of the church. Mm -hmm. um, and I was doing my, you know, we were doing the, the little bit that we could um, to help, to help and to assist the church in her mission, um, in our mission. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, but then sometimes it can take a toll. Um, but then I just kept going on, <laughs> kept Pressing well, on, pressing that's on. right. You, 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 you probably have kept pressing on and, uh, you know, our Lord said, don't count the cost. So we, we don't count the cost. And, and uh, so, so you've, in a sense, I guess you, you probably have um, passed through that situation. And what, the, what does the center do? Uh, you, you've developed this, you've uh, grown it. And uh, what would be some of the programs? What do you do? Yeah, mainly. Um, so basically what we do is um, we we have pilgrimages. We form, mm -hmm. we like every May, we have a family pilgrimage. And we what we do is we pray for the needs of families and the church and the, and the world. Mm -hmm. So we, di we visit different churches um, here, here in Wellington. And um, we have like a program. Um, and that's done every May because May is the month of Mary. So we yes. call it uh, the fam a family pilgrimage with Mary. So um, we seek her intercession, especially um, if you recall in the wedding at Cana, um, yes. Jesus, um, you know, went to his mother and, his, uh, and he said, woman, it's not yet my time. And yet yes. um, he obeyed his mother. <laughs> so we know how strong Mary's intercession is. Exactly. So we go to her as powerful. our mother. That's right. Um, nice. and, our Lord yeah. denies her nothing. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we, do, we hold it in May. And also May is also the month of Our Lady of Fatima. And Our Lady of Fatima is one of the um, patron, patron saints of um, the center. And she is also very close to Pope John Paul II. So Pope John Paul II is also um, actually our patron saint. Um, he, the Center for Marriage and Family is actually rooted in his teachings, mm -hmm. um, based, uh, mainly Familiaris Consortium, which is the post synodal exhortation yes. of Pope John Paul of. Pope John Paul II on the role of the Christian family in the modern world. Yes. Yeah, so basically um, our trust deed, everything that we are, what we do um, is, is rooted in that teaching of, of, of his, um, of what the family is, the identity of the family and the mission of the family. Um, yeah, so Pope John Paul II is um, yeah, a, a very big part of who we are in the center. Um, and 
Yeah, so we have the family pilgrimage with Mary um, in 2021, which was the uh, which was the year of Saint Joseph. We also had um, we organized a pilgrimage, um, which was during the year of Saint Joseph, and this one was dedicated to Saint Joseph. Um, um, Perfect. Yeah. The patron saint of the Catholic CEO. Saint Joseph, <laughs> yes. Our patron saint, yes. indeed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So actually, it it completes the picture. Not only Mary, but you have Saint yeah. Joseph there. Yeah. yeah um, the Holy and family. of course, our Lord. Yes. Um, aside from pilgrimages, we also have courses on the theology of the body. We like uh, we have held courses on the theology of the body, um, and it, basically the, the theology of the body is um, is based on the general audiences of Pope John Paul II. Also, when he was he first became pope, and it's about um, be, uh, it's like a crash course on being human, on what it is to be a man, what it is to be a woman, and the complement yeah the complementarity between the sexes. And how we are not, um, we are not here to fight each other, but we are here to help one another. Yeah, yes. and, um, yes. you know, attain holiness and and become more like the the Trinity. So, with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the communion of persons. So the family for us is is like an icon of the Holy Trinity. We're supposed to mirror um, the the love that the Holy Trinity has for each yeah. other. Yeah, of course we fail, we are fallen, but you know, God created us in his image and likeness, and he um he 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 expects us to be for, be perfect like he is perfect, and he will give us the grace to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. My uh, my recollection of the theology of the body was on one of my trips to Rome, uh I was there for about a month, um and it was kind of a retreat and I remember uh, seeing uh, Pope John Paul at a papal audience. And then uh, sometime later, um, after he died, I was in Rome uh, and I had this big thick volume with the theology of the body. And I remember throughout a month in Rome, sitting at a residence right just a stone's throw from St. Peter's Square, studying that manual and, and looking through it and really understanding the theology of the body. And I had remembered hearing some of these exhortations in his, in his weekly audiences and there it was, this collection of it all. So I have a, a powerful memory of studying that, but in the shadow of St. Peter's, you know what I mean? It was, it was great. It was something. Mm. So you're, you're, the influence of that work on the center is profound. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, actually if, you, if you go back further, um, when, we, when we were first formed, the first thing that we did was actually to attend the Eighth World Meeting of Families. And that um, was, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we went to Philadelphia, um, and it was a really good experience because, um, so the the center was es established in um, two thousand fourteen August. Uh, yeah, I forgot to say that um, the marriage amendment amendment bill passed on in August, uh, I think thirteen two thousand thirteen, mm -hmm. and the year after that, in August seventeen, that's when our center was established. That we were organized right um, around the feast of the assumption yes a little close to the feast of the assumption yeah, yes beautiful. which is also my alma mater i went to assumption college uh, so and well, here know. in new zealand yeah and here in, in new zealand the patron uh, of um new zealand patroness is actually our lady of the assumption yeah beautiful. so it all it all it all it, comes it all together. ties together and i you know i i don't want to talk about my my own self here too much but it's uh my birthday is August fifteenth, and so wow. I I was consecrated to Our Lady as a as a baby by my parents, and you know it's it's a powerful feast day for me not because it's my birthday but because it's her feast day, and mm -hmm. that is an amazing uh, part of my life as well. So I'm glad you mentioned that. It me it means a lot to me to hear that you say that. So that's pretty cool. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Actually, we have a national shrine here in Otero, Otero New Zealand, and it's mm -hmm. it's to Our Lady of the Assumption. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so um yeah, World Meeting of Families was established by Pope John Paul II, I believe. Um he was the one the initiator. Um World Youth Day as well. Um yes. yeah, I was able to go when I was young, a young person, I was able to go, my husband and I also to um World Youth Day in um Paris, France. And we were able uh -oh. to visit, you know, we were able to go on a pilgrimage and then it ended in the World Youth Day. And we were part of 250 delegation of you know, pe Filipinos, <laughs> and um, Pope Pope John Paul II was the one, the Pope, um, during that time. So it was really, really good. 
so it's like we I feel that a lot of my you know the influence really of Paul John Paul II is very strong in what I do um, in what we do here at the center um, so we and in 2017 actually we also had um, we celebrated the 100 year anniversary of uh, the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima mm, yes. so workshops and all of that mm. and Pope John Paul II I don't know if you know he had this um, like close relationship with Our Lady of Fatima. Yes, yes. Yeah, because he was, um, I, I think there was an attempted to assassinate as, yeah. as, 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 on May 13, and he survived that assassination. That's right. And the, yeah. uh, the, the famous story of the, the bullet or fragments of the bullet were plated and in, melted into the crown that he yeah. placed on the, a statue of Our Lady. So I always remember that. But yes, the powerful impact of that date, exactly. It's, it's amazing. Mm. It really is amazing. Yeah. And he was going to announce the Institute on Marriage and the Family on that day. Oh, that I didn't recall. Yeah, on mm. that on that day, so, mm -hmm. but then the uh, attempted assassination happened. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, that's why we we have this devotion to Our Lady of Fatima as well. That's great. That's great. Well, you're so the center. You know, you're you're working along Pope Saint John Paul II, huge influence. You can see it in your personal life as well as with the center. I was going to ask you then, what are you seeing out there? What's what's happening to the family? The family's under attack. We know we can see every current event. You know, things are happening all over the world that are, uh, you know, and, and and literally today, an amazing uh, Supreme Court decision in the United States, which I know you would rejoice at. And so would I and, and, and everybody who's listening. Just just mark this day. This is the day that it actually happened. We're talking Patricia and I on the very day that this happened. But what do you see out there? With the family, you know, it's been said that the final battle will be against the family, uh, about the family, and I'm not saying that this is the final battle now. But what do you see? What are we? Is the family strengthening? Is it weakening? Are we? Um, you know, what do we do about it all? Can you comment about that one? Yeah. Um, I, first, I'm very happy with the Supreme Court decision, and it happened during yeah. the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Yes, the, the feast. Yeah. Of the, the feast exactly. of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So yeah. I was really like. Wow, Lord, um, yeah, and and um, yeah, there was a reflection that I heard that you know, well, a comment that um, you know the the heartbeat bills, and then the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You have the no. pumping heart of the Sacred, yeah. you know, of Jesus' yeah. Sacred yeah. Heart, um, yeah. which and through His love, you know, through His heart, yeah. His love en engulfs the whole world. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, what I see, I I see after this, what happened. I am very. I am very inspired and actually very heartened. Um, I see that that life is winning. Mm -hmm. I can see that um, even though there are dark clouds, um, you, you see it everywhere. Sure. Um, there are so many people out there who are fighting for um, family uh, mm -hmm. and faith, and they are not, and they are really committed. Um, persons like inspiring and I think this the overturning of Roe versus Wade would not have happened without their perseverance without their faith yeah. you know mm -hmm. without their prayers and and their activism and I think if we would like to see change um, we also need to continue um, you know to um, to continue to be inspired especially by the giants that have come before us you know these people who really, really sacrificed, and we can see the fruits of their sacrifice now. And they continue to, to sacrifice. Um, and I, I guess the example, the best example is our Lord. You know, he was met with so much, um, so much hatred. He, he, all, all he did was good. <laughs> Yes, and absolutely. he was innocent. And yet he was persecuted. Mm -hmm. He was maligned. He was you know, a lot of evil was done to him, and yet he he kept doing what his the father's will. Yes. Um, yes. You know, um, sharing the gospel, um, sharing life, um, healing, doing the father's will, and so I guess it's it, what we need to do as Catholics is also to focus on what the father's will is, and um, yes, to just continue pressing on, um, and we will be successful because. The Lord, ha the Lord has won the victory. Um, victory Absolutely. is ours. We all, That's right. We, we know. We know how it ends. We yeah. know how this ends. Yeah. 
-hmm. and the Immaculate Heart will triumph in the end. So yeah, yeah we just need to focus on that. Yeah, I, I know sometimes it's hard. I mean, I, I always, I myself, you know, there's so many challenges that I face and so, so much bad news in the, in the news, mm -hmm. but somehow you need to focus on the positive um, and, and listen to those people who are the prophets of our time. I think that God is raising or God has raised a lot of saints in our age. Um, maybe we don't see them. I think a lot of them are out there, you know, and they continue to inspire people. Sure. Maybe you're one of them. <laughs> Um, maybe you're one of them. <laughs> I think you're one of them. But, um, but you know, but seriously, the 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 idea that there are people fighting the fight, perhaps quietly, perhaps unknown, hidden, yes, not heard from, but yes. they're fighting the fight. And of course, we know that you know, we, we, it's our job. We we don't measure your success or my success or our fights by whether we win or not, but whether we tried. And so. You know, that's one way to put it, I guess. I see that there are so many people fighting the good fight in a hidden way. And this mm. is, this is you know, God will raise up sometimes public saints that inspire the whole world visibly, but not yes. always. Sometimes yes. people inspire. And I, I've come across in my life people who quietly inspire me uh, about the family mm. in their own way. And they don't have profound statements. They don't write, uh, you know, profound documentation. They don't. And they're not broadcasters, they're not media people, but in their own way, they live it. And so they're witness to the gospel there, and they evangelize just by their very presence. Recently, I've had uh, the privilege of uh, visiting a, uh, a cloistered monastery in uh, northern British Columbia, or sort of central British Columbia, and uh, doing some, some, some things to help the uh, Dominican sisters in this particular convent. And they also pray for the family. And so their own way, you know, it's, it's just a story. It's an example, but they're not public. They're visible. They're cloistered. And I only saw the prioress. Uh, I, I met with her for an hour or two, and, and I attended Vespers there. But I can see they're praying for many intentions, including the family. Mm. And, and so yes. that's a powerful witness, because without that prayer, where would we be? You know, yeah. we, we would be hampered a little bit more. And so it's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. When you so Patricia, when you see you know continuing further on the work of the center, do you work with let's say young people or who's who is the demographic? Who do you target? Families in general? What do you say to the young people? I'm interested what you think about how to change the culture by you know and resist the culture with all these variations on the family that are false. Mm -hmm. um, what do we say to the young people? Because yeah. a previous generation has has not helped. Let's call it. You know, the, 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 you could yeah. argue that it, the, a previous generation has made a mess of things, in some ways. Mm. What do we say to the young people? Yeah. So um, I'd, I'd I'd like to think that you know we're doing a lot of good as well through our prayers because we do have yeah. those pilgrimages and that a lot of these things that the good things that are coming out of it are a result of our prayer and our action. Um, with young people, so our demographic is really, you, you know, what we do really is to try to fill in the gaps. You know, th there's we don't we we exist to support and help the church. Um, if we feel that if we see that there are gaps and 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 that the church is not able to fulfill a certain need, that's where we come in. We try to come in if it's if it if we can. Um, so, but if there are existing like resources that are available already, we don't double up on uh, those yes. because sure. they are already existing. Sure. We try sure. to promote them. We try to, um, you know, to promote uh, the, the services that they offer. So basically with young people, I, I, especially here in, in New Zealand, I think there is a need, you know, to promote uh, the, the theology of the body. Mm -hmm. I think that's very basic to who we are, you know, as, as, as human beings, as Catholics, yeah. in God's image, I guess it's an understanding of, um, yeah, who we are as people, as persons, and what does it mean to be a, a woman or a man? Because you, you can't really talk about marriage um, if, you, if we're so confused about who we are as people, you know, we don't even know who we are as a man or a woman. Yeah. And yeah. basically being a man and a woman, that's the bedrock of marriage. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so, and, and that's, that, so the challenge is really in our time um, to, 
to be able to communicate what a man is, what a woman is, what a person is, um, especially like in uh, when we when you talk of abortion, because you know, we, we don't know what a person is. That's why for us, it's easy for people to dehumanize the, the child. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's really going back to maybe the family as being the, the bulwark of society, promoting the family, strengthening the family, um, not only the bulwark of society, but um, the cornerstone or of the, the church, sure. but sure. not to see the, the family as a... Um, as an object of evangelization, but as the subject, you know, like some, mm. sometimes we think that the family yes. is, you know, um, our aim is to help families, but actually within the family, I feel the solution is already there, that we only need to find out our true identity and knowing our identity in Christ, then we can go out and do our mission of evangelizing other families and being salt and light in, in the world. Yeah. You, you've said a powerful thing a moment ago about dehumanizing. And, you know, the enemy does try to do that. It, it, the, the way you freeze the, the, you freeze the image, you dehumanize, and, and therefore you decouple the relationship within the family, and you create chaos that way. And that's what the enemy is trying to do. And so I'm very heartened by what you just said. That is a very powerful statement, you know, Patricia, to, to say that we are, uh, we want to, know our identity as a as a man and as a woman and you know even in in pop in the popular culture today even in the last weeks and months we both have seen around the world people are in a sense mocking the concept or or trying to obfuscate trying to create a a, a false image of what a person is what a woman is what a man is and you know we're in a certain sense society has really gone off the rails about that but what you're telling me i think and telling our audience is it's we're we're getting to uh, these are my words not yours but putting the we're getting back to the basics what is the role of a man in the family and a woman in the family children husband and wife you know if we can perfect that and mm. approach the ideal which our lord taught and which the blessed trinity is an example you know we we can do I was going to say it's good enough. Now that's it's not good enough, but it, the concept is that's the essence of it. it. Isn't much more complicated than that, and yet it can be very complex because it's teaching. You're teaching the theology of the body. You're teaching families a, a whole new generation. You could say um, to do it better. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's hard also because the secular culture and a lot of government, especially in the Western countries, they go against the you know yeah. they marginalize the family and they go against if they see the family as a lifestyle choice instead right. of like um fundamental foundational you know. for um the flourishing of society um so i i see that what we need to do is also to put back the family at the center like of, mm -hmm. of the policies of all our policies and what what will lead to the flourishing of the family and that's what we need to mm -hmm. to really work on um and to really determine you know and yeah this uh, you've actually reminded me of a, again it's a story from the past it's probably 20 well it's about 25 years ago i was the deputy minister of social services in a canadian province province of saskatchewan and the premier of the day the premier of the province was catholic and so one day i was invited into a meeting at a cabinet meeting with the minister and and i was the deputy minister and so talking with the premier about a, a family policy conference we actually did this. The, the, that government hosted all the other provinces in Canada to come to a family policy conference. And mm. of course, at the time, I might have been somewhat naive. I didn't realize the extent of the, the enemy's attack on that. Not only the enemy, but people, uh, ideolo ideologues, people, left wing. You know, it was, it was incredible to see the hatred because we were talking about a simple concept like family policy, meaning what can governments do to strengthen the family? And people tried to, you know, it's a long story, but, but people tried to attack that very concept of us putting a conference on to talk about government policy. Well, today I, I can say that it would be impossible to put on such a conference today. People would mock it and it would be, but this is, this is some time ago. It's, it's, you know, a couple of decades ago, but I just, it reminded me when you said that how, we need to have government 
or society in general, and, and government isn't going to solve this. I know that. But government can support the family. And even in the Catholic CEO, we believe that the purpose of the, fi- the business is not to build wealth for ourselves, but to support our family. And then we can do both. So anyway, I'm off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I, I feel that the work that you're doing is eminently powerful to shore up and strengthen the family and to inspire people because people look around and, and the family is under attack and where do they get support? And, yeah. and so they come to you in, in, uh, in New Zealand, you know, and elsewhere, people will come to you and to your organization for prayer, but for action as well. Are you doing anything politically or any kind of public no, action? No. no, so we we stay out of the political fight. But uh-huh. then like when when um, we're more like a missionary organization, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. our objective is to meet the needs of the heart of families. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ba- basically heart means um, H is for humanitarian aid. So mm-hmm. if, we're, if we're able to provide for, you know, families in need, um, education is basically to... Um, help families apply biblical principles in their life, you know, um, especially building up a Catholic family culture. Yes. Um, and then A is for advocacy. So like um, like today when the uh, Roe versus Wade decision came out, you know, I sent out an email just saying that, you know, this it's a historic decision and yeah. on the Feast of the Sacred Heart at that, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Enjoy those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and try to advocate, like when the movie on plan came out, also we sponsored a movie um, showing, mm-hmm. uh, show, you know, we show the movie. And then, um, so that's the advocacy part. And um, then research is mainly, yeah, if, if, we, if we had enough, you know, funding and all that, you know, maybe we could encourage research into how, into certain things that are happening in society and how we can improve the, you know, the lot of families. And then T is may, it means mainly stands for transform, and we do it through prayer and action. So basically, that's it. Um, yeah, meeting the needs of the hearts of families, because um, we can't really help families if spiritually, if we also don't provide them with, if 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 we you know with with um, the tools that they need, you know, um, to flourish. Yeah. So yeah, so so that's what we're trying to do. And one of the things that I was thinking, I know that the government really won't be of help, but you know, I was I was thinking like we we what would be needed is really to create a fund for families, you know, um, where we can be able to do all those things. But yeah, that's a that's a prayer. Oh, no, and it's true. I mean, we need funding, we need resources yeah. and money to do it. And, you know, the, not to not to say that the Catholic economy project that we have is the answer necessarily, but it is one of the answers. And so it's my hope that you and I will collaborate in the future to, to make known the work of your organization on the Catholic economy platform, because that's intended to draw people from all over the world uh, to come together, to find each other, and to support each other's causes. Because together, if we do this well, we're going to resist the culture. We're going to become an economic force. You know, that's my thing at the Catholic yes. School. I believe we can become an economic force. And when we become an economic force, not living in a parallel economy, engaging with the economy, but doing it in a Catholic way, if we do that well, we will be able to change laws and regulations and and practices and cultural social mores and all that sort of thing if we if we do it well and so it's a small action uh, in many ways your organization is taking a small action uh, we are taking a small action but together we will we will actually we will prevail we know who wins in the end we've said that already mm. today but uh, so so money solves it and and in a certain well money contributes to the solution let's put it that way because it's the effort and the prayers and it's it's god's permissive will that that allows the right combination of people to come together with the resources to solve it. What would be some plans that you would have then? You, you know, you're, you're, you've done, you're doing so many wonderful things, powerful things. Do you have a vision of where your organization could go with further resources or help, or is it to continue the mission as you have laid it out? Yeah. So, you know, we've been around for many years already. So we're in a period of transition um, and we're also, um, thinking of how we, we can become more sustainable as an organization. Mm-hmm. So um, one of the things that well we we need to do is really to build up the the base, build up the base um, um, locally, um, so that we can 
work work things out uh, you know become more effective in what we do mm -hmm. yeah because um you know what what we've done in the past is that you know like i i do this part time i'm not getting yes. paid or anything yeah ah, so um yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i'm like i work i have my own work my job but then when i what i can give i i i give sure. but then that that can't be the way it is you know forever right. yeah so yeah. Yeah, and and of course we also want to attract other people. Like if if I'm gone, you know, we want the work to continue. You know, that's it. You you need a succession plan. Like when we talk to our business clients, we need a succession plan. So do you. So do I. So do we all in our organizations. And that's yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So there's um, yeah. So you see, volunteer work, it's hard. It's a challenge. You've got other priorities in your life too, which are important, such as your family and your work and so on. And, and it all, in the end, we need to uh, gather more and attract more people. And uh, from that, you know, the vision can grow. So you're in a period of transition now. And, and I guess it means that you're looking for, uh, you know, resources and, and I suppose people, would that be right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so hopefully we'll have, um, yeah, because I'm because sometimes it's I'm limited as well um, with um, the time, you know, resources as, mm -hmm. but um, but I have a new job now, which might enable me, and it's part time, and I have like a, a day that maybe I can set aside, you know, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some work uh, for the family, um, and I plan to, you know, really try to build up, shore up that base. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, um, form connections, um, networking. <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, locally, locally, aside from internationally, what we're doing with, in, in the Catholic economy project, sure. but, um, sure. you have to start locally first and, um, you just build because instead of like organizing events all the time and having projects, have they having that base, um, and then when that base is more stable, then we can do other things. <laughs> That's right. No, and it's 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 the classic situation, isn't it? There, I've seen it again. Getting back to history stories, I could I could think of several organizations that were volunteer run, small, powerful, had some good impacts. Could see beyond, you know, into the next hill, over the next hills, and into the next valley, what the possibilities are, and yet maybe not enough people, maybe not enough money. And then volunteer exhaustion and things like that. These things happen to organizations, don't they? And so, you know, you you you've got a vision, and and so I can I can understand period of transition, building the base, mm, bringing yeah. new people in, and uh, you know, your children and the other people's children. Maybe that'll be the next uh, the, the next wave of uh, strength. You know, extra extra troops, you might say, to uh, to help fight the yes. uh, to fight the fight. Interesting. Well, you know, Patricia, there's so many things we could talk about, and I, I know that we'll we'll have to do this again. We'll have to continue this conversation, but maybe we uh, will end. We'll come to the natural end of our conversation today. Where do we find you? What's the uh, where's your contact information? What projects are you working on? What do you need? Do you got anything that you're any publications or any events you want to talk about? This is your chance to uh, completely promote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you can find us at www.marriageandfamily.org.nz uh, we don't have anything yet in the pipeline um so yeah I, this is like a period of uh, like a hiatus at the moment mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because mm -hmm. so much has gone on during the past year and we're just like wanting to find out like what to do next next steps and we don't want to just go out there right away we'll, we'll try to see. i we have ideas i have ideas in my head <laughs> about what I would need to do or what I plan to do. Um, but those are not yet, um, they're, they're not yet uh, what's set in stone. So right. we'll, see how it goes. Yeah. well, no, it's, it's the, you know, the, in business, so we'd say it's the, strate the strategic planning phase right now or something like that. And, but it's, it's yeah. time for prayer. And then, you know, we, I think that one of the things we, I'm sure you'll ask us is to, to offer our prayers because, you know, your organization and so many, hundreds and hundreds of other ones like it are fighting the good fight and it's a struggle because it's it just it takes time and effort and sometimes the gains may not be as powerful but 
we won't know until you know the day of judgment uh, at the end mm-hmm. of the world we'll know the impact and the good that you did so well let's go, let's let's keep um, let's keep in touch and have uh, further conversations sometime you've given us the contact information thanks for that and thanks for being with us today patricia it's been i think it's been a powerful conversation very much appreciated so thanks for being thank, here with thank us thank you so much henry thank you for the opportunity you're very welcome and thanks everyone for joining us uh, our guest has been patricia Cison, the director for the center for marriage and family in new zealand a very interesting organization one that you should support not only by your prayers but i think uh, you should contact patricia and uh, offer financial and other support as well so thanks again everybody we'll see you next time god bless god bless thank you